welcome to a very special Christmas edition of Meals with Maria. It is my second annual Christmas in your crock pot. I have some awesome recipes for you today. I've got two sides, a breakfast and a dinner. Now I know you can't, I mean, unless you have five, six crock pots, <laughs> cook it all at once for Christmas, but utilize that crock pot on Christmas. I always do because I wanna make at least something that I don't have to worry about. These recipes tested, I loved, and I'm so excited to share. So dust those crock pots off, it's Christmas time. The first recipe I'm making is a side that's called butternut squash with whole grains. So you're gonna want one whole butternut squash cut up, one onion diced. You'll need one cup of wild rice. Then I have a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of salt. And you can also use a quarter teaspoon of pepper. The equivalent of three cloves of minced garlic. And then one can or 14 and a half ounces of either vegetable broth or chicken broth. I'm just using chicken bouillon. And you're also gonna need a half a cup of water. I just love the simplicity of this dish because you take all that stuff, add that to your slow cooker and cook it on low for four to five hours. When those grains are cooked, your recipe is done. Now go ahead and add a little bit extra salt at the end to make it what you want and what you're, the flavor that you're looking for. And it's delicious. This is a great side dish because it kind of does your starch as well as your vegetable. Now the recipe also says that you can add in some fresh spinach. And I did not because I think my spinach went bad on this day, unfortunately. You know how that spinach is. It's like two seconds and it's gone. But I'm sure it would taste delicious with spinach as well. So go ahead and add that in. tree you'll ever be unchanging a symbol of good will and love you'll ever be unchanging each shining light each silver bell. now my next side dish is garlic parmesan potatoes oh my goodness are you guys sick of seeing me cut vegetables like this Oh my God. You know what? It gets it done and it worked out fine. So you wanna take your red potatoes and cut them into wedges. This dish is awesome because it's so easy. You can even make it with a baby. So I'm using about three pounds of red potatoes or what equals about eight cups. Put those all inside of your slow cooker and now I'm making the sauce. You're gonna need a quarter cup of olive oil, a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. I did read after that you're supposed to put the Parmesan after but I made it as part of the sauce and it still turned out delicious. So you wanna use three teaspoons of minced garlic, then a teaspoon of oregano and a teaspoon of thyme, as well as a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Now mix that all up and then pour it over your potatoes in your slow cooker and cook that on high for four hours. Like I said, you can do it this way. I thought it turned out great. Or you could make your olive oil mixture and then pour the Parmesan cheese over the potatoes afterwards. I haven't tried it that way yet, but I'm sure it's delicious. And these are amazing. They are so creamy, so good. It's like a roasted potato, but you cooked it in your crock pot. And I just have never had anything so awesome uh, come out of the crock pot. Like that's not like mushy, you know, it, they cook perfectly. And I actually had some left over the next day and I threw them on a sheet pan and roasted them and they're delicious that way as well. All right, now it's time for our breakfast dish. This is awesome, you can tell, because it has brioche bread. So we're gonna make a French toast casserole in our slow cooker. I'm gonna use six eggs, two cups of milk, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, in my mind, you can never have too much cinnamon, so go crazy if you'd like. And then you're gonna mix that up, and you're gonna add in a whole loaf of brioche bread diced into you know, like a stuffing size or maybe a little larger than that, cubes. And you wanna let that sit for at least four hours or overnight. Personally, I did this and we ended up having like breakfast for dinner, which was so awesome. But for Christmas, obviously you wanna do it the night before, just let it sit in your fridge and that way you can just pop it in your crock pot the morning of. Now, if you remember one thing for this recipe, spray down your crock pot, spray it well, or use a slow cooker liner because this will stick, it has sugar, it has eggs. You wanna make sure that you have a lot of non-stick stuff on there. So you just wanna put your refrigerated overnight bread into your crock pot with all of your spray, your cooking spray on there. And then we're gonna make the topping. The topping is super simple. 
I'm just mashing up a quarter cup of softened butter. And to that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon, you know, a teaspoon or so, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and a dash of nutmeg. Now the recipe also calls for chopped pecans, which I think would be delicious in this, but unfortunately my kids do not like nuts, so that would be a no-go for us. Now you just wanna mix that really well, and without the pecans, it does turn out a little bit pasty, I guess, but it still turned out fine. I was just kind of able to break it up into little pieces and place it over the top of the casserole. You wanna cook your casserole on low for four hours or high for two, and I actually ended up doing the high for two and it turned out great. And you know, depending on when you wanna eat your breakfast on Christmas, I think the high for two would work out best for us. And now I know that it works. Now we serve this alongside some bacon and some berries and we had whipped cream at the table. So it really doesn't get any better. Put those berries and whipped cream on there and enjoy. Our last but not least final recipe is the dinner recipe. And this is a red wine braised short rib. Now that is a fancy Christmas dinner and pretty simple. So I'm just cutting up two carrots, two ribs of celery, and one large onion. You're gonna wanna add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of oil to a large pot. And in this case, I had three short ribs. Now the recipe calls for five to six larger ones. It was just myself, my husband, and our two boys eating these short ribs this night. And you know, short ribs are not cheap. It was about $25 for the three short ribs. It's very expensive, like regular dinner for us. So if you wanted to double that for your Christmas dinner, it would cost around 50. I still think that's very reasonable for a fancy Christmas dinner, especially if you're having more people and there'll be plenty of food. So you just wanna sear your short ribs on all four sides, then remove them from the pot. To your hot pot, add in three cloves of crushed garlic. Now I just had the mince, so I didn't have like any full cloves, so I used what I had and it was still delicious. At this point, turn your heat down to medium, add your onion and cook for about two minutes. Add in the rest of your vegetables and cook for about another five minutes until softened. Mix in two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now you can see I'm pulling mine out of a bag because I often will open a can. I only need two tablespoons. What am I gonna do with the rest? You can just throw that in the freezer in a little baggie and then you just have it whenever you need on the go. It cooks right up. Cook that for about a minute, then add in two cups of beef broth, two cups of red wine, and then I'm adding some dried thyme. Now it does call for fresh, so if you have fresh, go ahead and use it. And then you also wanna add in two bay leaves. Now the recipe does have an option to just keep cooking everything in that pot right there, which you can totally do. But given that this is a crock pot video, we're gonna move our short ribs to the crock pot and then we're gonna pour all of that sauce right on top of there. gonna wanna cook this on low for eight hours or high for five hours. I did the high setting for five hours and this is how it turned out. It was fall off the bone, delicious. The flavors were incredible, totally worth it. Now you wanna take the juices afterwards and strain it. Now I'm using a gravy, uh, gravy separator, I think it is. And what that does is it puts all the juices down below and then you see how the fat is kind of sitting on the top and it will pour only the good juices to make the gravy out of the top of it. So the recipe does recommend that you take that and you pour it into a pan and boil it for about five to 10 minutes and it just really reduces the sauce and it's so delicious. So I wish I'd used Christmas plates here because this looks so lame. It was just like a random Tuesday, but it was so amazing. I did cook some potatoes in the air fryer. I could put that recipe down there for you too, but this was awesome and definitely Christmas worthy. Like everybody would rave about it. I just wanna thank you so much for watching this video today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm making some amazing holiday content and I have lots of other great extreme grocery budget challenges and budget videos too. So go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos and you don't miss any of the fun. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see y'all very soon. I've been